everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy Asian Shea and thank you for joining me for another behind the scenes video. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different this week because the soap I'm going to show you on the weekend again doesn't have any embeds to go on the top. Um, but what I thought I'd do is take you along as I do some of my tidy up of this coconut rain soap that we made last weekend. Um, for those that you, of you that did see the video, you would have seen that I had a lot of trouble with this batter which resulted in lots of little air pockets and I thought I'd take you along and show you how I'm going to fix them up. Now I have washed my hands and I've sterilized them and everything else. It is much easier to do this without gloves on because the gloves just get really sticky. What I first of all do with all of my soaps is after they've sat here for a little while and they've firmed up, I just take my little peeler here and I just take all the very corners of the soap off. So I'll just quickly finish these ones. I have actually stamped this one already, which was a part of the photo that we do for the, the actual soaps. So we'll do that one and we'll get on to this one. Okay, so they are now all nicely trimmed up. And what I do is with all these trimmings, so I'll either keep these trimmings in a bag so we can make a confetti soap down the track. Or the other thing is, because this is all nice and soft and pliable, what I can do is roll it up into a little bit of a ball. And as you start moving with it, it's a bit like Play-Doh. It becomes a lot smoother and more pliable. And what I'm going to do is I might take this bar first because we've got a big hole on the side of it here. All I'm going to do is push some of that soap dough in and then just gently maneuver it around with my fingers just to get it nice and smooth and it fills in those little holes and you really can't tell that there was too much of a fix up there. So that's a really nice, quick, easy way of fixing up any air pockets. So we'll do these ones in here as well. So now we've got our bar of soap and there are no holes in it anymore. So that is perfectly good to go onto the shelf. You can also do it, so say for this bar of soap here, if you've got little holes, if they really do bother you, um, providing you've got the same colour soap, like this one's pretty good because it's all multicoloured, but if you've got like a white patch, if you've got a bit of white soap, you can just fill it in with a little bit of that soap. We'll get some more around here. It's a bit like working with wood putty to fill in holes around the home. I'm going to scrub a little bit more on this one. And I'm just wiping it into this one because it's quite a small hole there. I'm just smoothing it all the way down. These ones around here, I'm not too bothered about filling them up, but you get the idea. You can fill these holes up in any way that you want. If you're not the sort of person that likes to trim the edges of your soaps off, I do it because I don't like the really sharp corners of soap when you first use them. I find that it digs into me, so I like to trim them off so that they're not too sharp. But if you're not the sort of person who likes to trim your soaps, we usually all end up with that little sample piece off the end. On occasion, what I've actually done is I've used this sample piece and used that to fill in all the little gaps on my soaps. So I'm going to keep getting these ones all filled in and then I am going to do the stamping. When I was actually first doing this, where I was squishing my soap together to fill in the holes, that I worked out that my soap recipe was actually okay for doing um, soap dough with because it all came together nice and smoothly. So if you, if you are too unsure or if you are unsure if your soap recipe that you use is okay for making soap dough, just shave off a couple of bits of your next soap and um, have a play with it and see if it all comes together nicely into some soap dough. Okay, 
so that is all of the holes actually now filled in on my soap. I've still got a couple where I've got little bits like that, but I'm not too particularly bothered about the really small holes that are in here. I'm really pleased with how these are now actually looking, so it's time to go and get them stamped. Okay, so I'm actually going to lie all of these out flat. I do have one of them which is already stamped. And when I'm lining them up to stamp, I actually then do take some photographs pretty much straight away. So I'm a bit particular in how I am actually laying these flat so that I can then just take my photo straight away. So we'll get all these ones laid down. All right, so we're all laid out now. Now I've actually got two different soap stamps. I've got one which just has the actual graphics from off my business names and my logo. And then I have the one with my business name and my logo on it. This one I use for my smaller bars of um, soap, like for wedding favours and things like that. And this one is for my bigger ones. Now I got my soap stamp off BB. Um, they are in Thailand, I believe, but they are really quick to post them out. They are so professional and are really willing to help you get your designs come together and the perfect size for your soaps. I highly recommend them. I will leave a link to their site down below in the description box. All I'm going to do is line my soap up on here. Now you can simply push down and lift up, but I have mentioned in previous videos, I've got quite weak wrists. So what I like to do is take my mallet and I just give it a couple of little taps and lift up and then I'll bring that one up so you can have a bit of a closer look so you can see it gives a really nice crisp clean image of your business name and logo they it is such a great quality stamp that they do and I've had this one now for about oh it must be about two and a half years so I'm just going to finish stamping all these up now all ready to take photographs of once I've got my photos I'm going to pop them onto the curing rack for the next four weeks and then they'll be ready to go I'm not sure if you can hear that dog crying away in the background that is our neighbor's dog um, we've borrowed their trailer and I suspect that they've come over to help my husband load it up and she is now crying for some attention I hope you've been able to pick up some good tips out of how I fix up these soaps that end up with air pockets in them. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you are new around here, why not hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell sign and it will let you know when I bring another soapy video to you. So thank you so much for watching and until the next time, have a great week. Bye.